what's up guys how's it going and welcome to the midnight channel today we're going to be talking about multiple endings so one of my favorite features or one of my favorite things in general about mega 10 it's a fact that um pretty much like all games or the majority of the games have multiple endings and they're all like in a different kind of sense like every game from uh, original Mega Ten, Mega Ten to the Persona series to uh, Catherine, they all have a different way to approach the multiple ending scenario, which is usually pretty good. Now, I don't want to say clean and, and sit here and claim that Mega Ten just kind of like created the genre, but they definitely done something interesting with the genre itself. They have definitely do something that. Um, I don't think a lot of games do it and uh, for example but all the mainline games in the Mega Ten series um, focus on uh, um, Chaos Law and um, kind of like the middle right and it's an interesting way to see how that works out because uh, it's not necessarily a good versus evil scenario or it's more it's not a bad ending versus good ending scenario because there's a lot of games out there that do multiple endings but they always focus on like good ending bad ending for example persona typically will do that where there's like a good ending and then there's a bad ending and that's pretty much it and um Mega Ten or, or at least uh, Shin Megami Tensei Mega series does focus a lot on uh, a lot of the morality side of the questions that you answer. Uh, of course, a lot of them, and in some of them, in, in these scenarios, it's actually really easy to kind of just tell which ones kind of like which ones which ones. Sometimes it's, it's a really big mess, like in Shin Megami Tensei Four, but you actually have to follow a guide to kind of tell you where to go from things and just kind of like okay this is this one this is this one kind of thing I personally don't like that too much I'd rather just be able to um, to get this scenario based on kind of like my own beliefs but sometimes it's just so hard to be able to get like a neutral ending or something like that the requirements of them are fairly kind of not really straightforward on the other hand there are games like strange journey that really just have a morality system the entire time of the game you always know where you're sitting whether you're sitting on law or chaos or whatever you're doing you're always kind of like sitting where based on your decisions you can kind of just see the mirror go up and down and just kind of know where you're really just being entirely but in the end of the game you really know what kind of ending you're gonna get because you get you can visually see what you're doing and how you're performing so far which is again something that i do appreciate i i like the fact that you kind of know uh my favorite game and i feel the game that really just does um in a moral sense like the best kind of meter is Catherine and Catherine full body so Catherine and Catherine full body kind of sit apart from the rest of the Mega 10 series because personally it, it's not necessarily like in the Mega 10 series it just kind of sits on its own and because of that they're able to play with a lot of the things that other series are not able to uh, particularly because as I mentioned before the morality of the things it's more on the sense but it just feels like you're really just making choices on your own um one of the major things for me is not only just how the game approaches choice and consequence but also how it really chooses to allow the, the player to kind of interact with the rest of the world uh Catherine particularly feels like a really personal game because while you are interacting with the rest of the world like your your friends and what you say to them and your text message with the uh, text messages with the girlfriend and uh, the other girls and everything you're really kind of still interacting with the rest of the bar you walk around you meet all these other people you know these people because you're seeing them on the other dream world and as you approach and the world uh, the world is becoming more darker and you start finding out more secrets from different people it kind of really starts shaping your mentality as far as like what's going on right there it does kind of try to to show you something that is different from other mega 10 games or other persona games and this one particularly doesn't feel like it's preaching anything as moras is just kind of letting you guide yourself and that's one thing that i kind of feel like some games are they kind of try to guide you in a specific direction for example uh smt4 and uh 
more uh, apocalypse really they kind of really want you to go the neutral route because of the endings and everything and it does feel like the entire time although but do you have choices both of those choices seem so so uh on the end like so on the opposite ends that are kind of like they're just equally bad so you have to take the middle path to be able to kind of have some leeway or where to go um, now on no all Mega Ten games are like these. I feel like some Mega Ten games approach things very differently. Nocturne, for example, having reasons instead of uh, the uh, neutral chaos law, the thing is a little bit different. It does approach more of the philosophical questions of life, whether who we are as individuals versus who we are as a society, and uh, whether you know the uh only the more powerful deserve to live in in this new world kind of thing scenario it's a really philosophical game and it does try to approach things very differently than other mega 10 games and i really did appreciate that however at the same time i feel like it's also one of the more easier ones in terms of like knowing who you're gonna align with because it's basically just do you want to join me yes no or maybe and it's kind of like kind of it's kind of how it goes with all this uh, the the way that a lot of your uh, a lot of the people that choose their alignments, which is kind of like the people that kind of uh, decide that they're gonna have a reason, uh, it's just kind of bizarre too. Like your two friends also make kind of like these decisions for their own reasons, but instead of just kind of having it up to you, in kind of like maybe developing the, your relationship with them better, they just kind of like. Well, during this time frame that I we were up, apart, I kind of decided my own reason for being, and here's why I choose to believe what I believe. Kind of, it's like really like rudimentary as far as like a conversation. Like you don't approach anybody, and you're kind of like, well, you know, we've been apart for some time, and so this is how I feel about life. Kind of like starting a philosophical talk with your uh, classmate from school. I don't know. It just feels incredibly bizarre the way that they approach this um interaction i don't know overall I, I do like a lot of the different reasons i think they're interesting on their own and if you look at them again from a philosophical perspective they do have something else to say unfortunately again the game just kind of not does not do a really good job as far as like really exploring these philosophical questions and exploring the characters along with its philosophical questions uh nocturne does a lot of things right but i feel like the characters especially the different alignment characters are not really well enough explored to the point where it makes you really wonder whether you're really liking a character and a philosophical question uh it does not do that unfortunately but overall i do love the system for the different games when it comes to multiple endings i think they all have something different to say about the world that we live in and about the world that they live in in the shimei Tensei universe it really does add that extra layer that you need for a game to kind of have its own really interesting aspects of it the world building if you must and as a Mega Ten fan, I'm just curious to see how Shin Megami Tensei 5 is going to approach this. We have a new different kind of world, the world of that, and we have a different uh, universe to explore with different demons as we've seen so far. And I wonder to see what kind of alignment system are they going to get, if they're going to have a very just normal rudimentary uh, alignment that just kind of falls under the law chaos endings on or if they're trying to do something more along the lines of nocturne with different philosophical questions and different approaches to it i don't know to me personally i just rather they do their own separate thing like every universe has its own separate rules per se and they end up having different things based on that but basically from what we've seen it definitely seems more leaning towards the law a chaos neutral um deal more than a more philosophical way to look at things which is a shame i think because uh, i personally don't really like the whole holy uh you know the angels and demons kind of thing i feel like there's a lot more out there to be explored in the mega 10 series than um you know law and chaos anyway thank you so much for watching this guys let me know in comments down below what do you think about all this how do you feel about all this stuff within the mega 10 series do you find this to be interesting or not? What is your favorite ending? And what is your favorite alignment? Are you chaos, neutral, or law?
Thank you so much for watching this guys, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.